thank you very much. Now, folks, who here in Toastmasters wants to learn to speak better? Wonderful. See, now this is called knowing your audience. That's the first key I want to give you guys. I'm going to give you four points. Know your audience. Think of common events or commonalities between the folks you're going to talk to. Using your body, smile, and use those eyes. That's what I want to talk to you about tonight. So let's get started. Where are you? Where, where, where are we right now? This is what you need to know. If you're going to go out and give a speech to people or go into a little interview, you got to know, are these folks business suits? Are they fluffy sweaters? What are these kinds of people? That's what you got to figure out first. So that way you can dress appropriately to where you're going to be going. This is pretty important. I had this one guy come in and interview for us, and I work at a company that does internet advertising. He came in this three-piece button-down suit, fedora hat, pinstripe pants, and the uh, wingtips. And we're just like, wow, that is exceptional. And we're sitting here in <laughs> this, and we're just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And that was, he even had the ivory cane to go with it. It was ridiculous. <laughs> Maybe you don't want to do that, because first impressions, folks, let's put it, put it to you, they count. It's San Francisco. So know your audience and dress appropriately. And who's there? Am I talking to, you know, the guy who owns the company? The dude that does the finance? I mean, who am I talking to? Know exactly the person that you're talking to so you can relate to them when you're trying to give a speech. Even if it's just for an interview, make sure you're, you know if you're going to be talking to a partner of a firm, understand the cases that firm may have. Do a little background test. This way, when you go in there, you have talking points, which is a huge thing for management. They love talking points. That way they can feel better about whatever they want to say. So think about what they would possibly talk about and make it happen, because then you can talk to anybody in that room, because guess what? You've done so much homework on those folks, it doesn't matter. And also, let's move to the second point, common events. Everybody here who watched the Super Bowl or heard of the Super Bowl or understands what Super Bowl is, raise your hand. All right, that would possibly be one of those things you might want to say, hey, Steelers or Cardinals, right? Because more than likely, if you're getting an American speaking to you, they'll be interested to go, oh yeah, screw, screw the Steelers. That's what they'll be really irritated by, and then they'll talk about the Cardinals. Gives you a couple minutes to build rapport, then they don't even remember what they were going to ask you in the first place, and then they just like you because you know football. Think of common events or common things. Especially, let's say that the, uh, the breast cancer awareness marathon will be happening, good training for you, a couple <laughs> months. You get out there, you get to hang out with some people that want to do a difference, and people want to hear about that. You say, hey, are you going to be doing this? You're going to... What do you think about the Golden Gate Bridge? What do you think about Alcatraz? Have you ever been there? Did you do it at night? Because there's ghosts, all right? That kind of stuff. Try to bring those into your repertoire when you're getting the speech and you're talking to folk. Because it'll soften you up and show them that you know, they can break down the barriers. The hardest part about getting toward people is trying just to get at their level. or So that way there's, they remove the anxiety from the situation. Because it's really anxious. When you got to interview people, I mean, is it kind of frustrating when you have to kind of guess who people are or what they want to do? Yeah, maybe. See, Thomas, he, he's telling me. It's really frustrating. So if I was just walk up and say, hey, Thomas, you know, I'm great to interview for this job. Hey, did you see that marathon that they're running over here? See, and then instantly he's feeling happy and good about it. So that's what you want to do. Make sure you're up and at them with all the local events that might be pertinent to the audience that we've already defined in the first step. So arts, if you're going to go interview at some art place, you may want to understand what's going, happen, going down in the social world of art. Just, just giving you that hint. Pretty easy. Smile. This is the third point. Nobody likes a frowner. And if you're a frowner, you're a downer. So let's get that out of the way, all right? The human body is made smile. You don't have to be obnoxious about it, but if you go in there, frowny face, indifferent, people are going to kind of wonder, wow, do I smell? I mean, do, do, I, do I have something horrible written on my wall somewhere? I mean, wh wh what's the deal? What's this guy's problem? And then instantly they go from, I like this dude, to, is it something about me? Or is he just irritated? And then you're pretty much toast. So think about it this way. If you smile, nobody asks questions about why you're smiling. If you frown, people ask questions as to why you're Browning. Need I say any more? Folks, can I get a hey yeah? Hey yeah! Hey, yeah. All right. <laughs> Smiling. 
Now use your eyes. This one is very important. <clears throat> Americans love looking at people's eyes because you can tell more from a person by what goes on behind their eyes and what they say out of their mouth. And this is also a little common thing to always remember is the following. Mob hitmen never look you in the eye before they kill you. Because they say you can see the soul. Don't do that stuff. Deborah, Jersey girl, is that true? I've never bumped anybody up. Okay, well, you see, that's being modest. Jersey people always do that. Or the you in chemicals. So let's just get this straight. Look at people's eyes. If they're looking down the bottom left, when they, when, if you're talking to somebody, like I'm talking to Ricky, and I ask him a question, if he starts doing bottom right, looking down, he's lying immediately, right? If his pupils start to get smaller, his brain doesn't know what I just said. <laughs> I'm serious, this is what happens. So your, your body will either do one of two things. You'll either be so adrenalated that the pupae in your eye will, will expand to the point where now you can see almost no color in their eye, which in case you know they're extremely nervous. And this is a good time to either press them for more or to run away, depending on which side of the table you're on. But in his case, if you're looking down to the left, watch out, because that guy must is, is really selling snake oil to you. And no one wants to have that kind of tall tail in their <coughs> interview. So just make sure you're conscious of these things. Also, if you're trying to interview with folks that aren't from the United States, you may want to make sure that you're understanding their cultural background in regards to how the eyes are used. This one will mess you up, because here you're going to be interviewing with a plethora of various nationalities and cultures and societies and religions. So just be conscious of, oh, this person doesn't like being looked in the eyes a lot. Because mostly, it's like in my case, I got a girlfriend, she's Japanese. Her thing is she doesn't really like maintaining eye contact for a real long time with people she doesn't know. So I have to continuously remind people, you know, just, I think personally, dude, she's just trying to be courteous to you. you know, they don't understand that thing. So, to submit, let's get this in a summation. Everyone wants to learn to speak to anybody, and I gave you the four points. We're going to go about, talk about your audience. Know what the common events are happening that pertain to that audience, and then understand you're going to have to smile to make sure they know you're not frowning. And then keep your eyes on the prize. Thank you very much, Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs>